Now that we have seen the features in the anterior and middle part of norma basalis, let us see the features present in the posterior part of norma basalis. So the posterior part of norma basalis is present behind the imaginary line drawn along the anterior margin of foramen magnum. The most characteristic feature that you can see in the posterior part of norma basalis is this large oval opening. This is the largest opening in the cranial cavity and this is called as foramen magnum. Through foramen magnum, the cranial cavity present above communicates with the vertebral canal below. In the anterior margin of foramen magnum, the center point is called as basion. The anterior margin of foramen magnum gives attachment to anterior atlanto-occipital membrane and the posterior margin gives attachment to posterior atlanto-occipital membrane. The lateral border of the foramen magnum gives attachment to alar ligament of dense. The anterior compartment is called as osseo ligamentous compartment because it mainly contains the odontoid process with its associated ligaments. The posterior compartment is called as neurovascular compartment because it mainly transmits the medulla along with its meninges and vertebral vessels. Now if you see the anterolateral aspect of foramen magnum, you can see two large masses. They are called as the occipital condyles. The inferior surface of the occipital condyle is this large oval convex facet that articulates with the superior concave facet present in the lateral mass of atlas to form the atlanto-occipital joint. Anterior to the occipital condyle, you can see a canal. This canal is called as anterior condylar canal which is also called as hypoglossal canal. It transmits the hypoglossal nerve out of the cranial cavity. Behind the occipital condyles, you can see two fossae. They are called as the posterior condylar fossae. Some of them may contain a foramen. In that case, it is called as the posterior condylar canal, which will transmit an emissary vein that communicates suboccipital venous plexus of veins to the sigmoid sinus present inside the cranial cavity. If you go posteriorly, the, this part of the posterior part of norma basalis is formed by the squamous part of occipital bone, details of which you have already studied in the suboccipital region. So we have a midline projection called as external occipital protuberance. Downwards from the external occipital protuberance is a raised crest called as external occipital crest. We have two superior nuchal lines and two inferior nuchal lines. The area between the superior nuchal line, inferior nuchal line and the margin of foramen magnum gives attachment to muscles which are seen in the suboccipital region. Now if we go lateral to the occipital condyle, we can see two projections of occipital bone. So this is the occipital bone and these are the occipital condyles. So these are the processes that I have been talking of now. These processes are called as jugular process. They are called as a jugular process because it forms a boundary anteriorly to a foramen present anterior to the jugular process and this foramen is called as the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen is formed by the jugular fossa of the temporal bone and the jugular process of the occipital bone. You can see a depression here in the jugular fossa of the temporal bone. It lodges the superior bulb of the internal jugular vein. You already know that the jugular foramen is divided into three compartments and you know the structures that pass through the jugular foramen. Anterolateral to the jugular foramen is a long bony process called as the styloid process. It is a part of the temporal bone and it is derived embryologically from the cartilage of the second pharyngeal arch. It is 2 to 5 centimeters long and it gives attachment to a few muscles and ligaments and together they are called as the styloid apparatus. Lateral most you have two conical large bony processes called as mastoid process. The lateral surface of mastoid process is irregular and it gives insertion to sternocleidomastoid. 
Medial to the mastoid process, we can see a deep groove that gives attachment to the posterior belly of digastric muscle. Still medially is another groove. This groove transmits the occipital artery. Between the styloid process and mastoid process, you can see a foramen. This foramen is called as stylomastoid foramen. The stylomastoid foramen transmits the facial nerve out of the cranial cavity. And posterior to the mastoid process, you can see one to two foramina. They are called as mastoid emissary foramina. The mastoid emissary foramen transmits mastoid emissary veins that communicate the suboccipital venous plexus to the sigmoid venous sinus. Thank you.